Hi. Um, for those of you that have uh, followed the previous series of this show, well, welcome back. And perhaps if you've not seen uh, the previous films, um, if you're interested, do, do have a look. Uh, quite a lot's been done to these skins. Um, I thought I'd just show you um, some progress where we're at with these shoes. They do look quite nice. A little dull, um, but they're actually starting to look quite nice. I've, I've been moisturising them for a few days and um, it could, you could sort of be mistaken for thinking, oh, well, they'll, they'll buff up and they're, they're fine. To be honest with you, they're probably only about 30 or 40% saturated with the cream. If I give these, let's just take a, a, an old, it's probably, good to me, it's very, very old, but it's clean. I don't know, it's probably from the 50s, that brush is very, very old. Um, give that a quick, a quick rub and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get a bit of a sheen. And they'll look very, very nice and quite honestly, they'll look wearable. Let's just stop there and I'm probably, in fact, I've got a cloth in my pocket, a nice, clean, dry, soft cloth. And uh, we'll give that a buff, just so that we can see where we are with this skin. And it will look very nice. It'll look extremely presentable and it'll look ready to go. Um, it's easily to be fooled with, um, with exotic skins. Um, they appear to be ready, to be ready to be worn way before they are. Now then, that's, that's just a few seconds, but let's just bring that up to the camera. It's got a lovely sort of glossy, sort of soft looking sheen about it. Obviously around the back here where it's still covered in the surface residue of moisturiser, it's, it's, it's rather dull, but you know, that would, uh, let's just give that a few seconds of rubbing. The heel as well. Back to my shy, nice clean cloth. This, this is all you do to uh, present and prepare exotic skins. You don't put polish on exotic skins. It just doesn't work. It, it, it clogs up between this, the, 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 the scales. There we go, just get that back in. So you can see we're starting to get there. It has got a beautiful appearance. But as I was saying, don't use um, regular cream, no, not cream, um, wax polishers on exotic skins. It will just clog between the, the scales and it'll go flaky. It will have a very dull surface. It will, it will give a very dull appearance. It will be much less shiny. This is actually quite shiny, even though it's half moisturised, barely buffed, no, no, no polish whatsoever. It's quite shiny. And... Um, but yeah, the wax polishers really don't work and um, they just sort of clog the surface and they sort of dull the natural luster of the, of the skin. Um, a wax polish is meant to reflect light and to be, to be able to reflect light um, evenly, it, it will only shine if the light reflects evenly. If it reflects in all different directions, you won't get much of a sheen or a shine. Um, and that's what will happen with exotic skins because they're, they're just, um, they're so uneven on the surface, it's very, very, very difficult to achieve a shine. So don't really try, just accept a, 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 a nice luster, but don't try and achieve a, a glossy shine. It just doesn't work with any exotics, alligator, crocodile, snake, and then this is um, iguana lizard. But really what I wanted to stress, um, I'm going to pop my, uh, I am absolutely once again covered in dust. I'm still working on this old building and um, so forgive, forgive my appearance, but never mind. I, I cover myself over. Um, I want to uh, just feel the insides. I did moisturise the insides about a week ago and that feels smooth, if not still slightly hard. Um, I'll definitely pop a bit more moisturiser inside there and I'm going to continue to be applying the cream, the cream moisturisers, just the black on the outside and uh, I've got another one. Um, it's like a tan colour on the inside, it's very similar to the, uh, the internal linings. Um, I'm going to continue to, to apply probably for at least another week, even though it does look lovely, it looks ready to go, it isn't. Um, exotics are weird, They've, the, the scales themselves, the kind of... Um, they're almost impervious to moisture, to water, to creams. It doesn't sink very well through the scale itself. It's around the scale. If we bring it close, you can see around the scales, the slightly softer skin, that, it's much more flexible and it's more porous. And they, they, as you rub in the moisturizers in, it doesn't go in very easily into the top of the scale itself. It, um, it goes in slightly, but probably eight to even nine percent of the moisture goes between the scales into the soft skin. And you, you have to use a stiff brush to sort of press it and agitate it in. And it's almost like a capillary effect. Um, once it starts to absorb, it drags it between the scales. And this will be the same on snake skin 
alligator skin, crocodile skin, most exotic skins that are scaly. The scales are slightly impervious, a little bit like your fingernails. Fingernails will let water pass through, but not as, you know, it's, it's far more easily, uh, you know, the, the, the skin itself is much, it's, 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 very, it's very similar to between the fingernails and the skin. When you're, you're putting moisturiser on, um, it goes into the skin very easily, um, it, much less so on the fingernails, even though eventually it will. Well, think about it like that. Um, it's a bit of a crude analogy, I know, but um, exotics are weird. So I'm actually going to pop a bit more cream on, and I'll try to touch if I can get these gloves on. They're not new. I've used them before, and sometimes they're difficult to get back on again. There we go. That one's on. Um, quite often they just burst when you try to use them for a second time. So let's see if I can get... Yes, it's on. Um, the cream won't harm my skin. It will not harm my skin. It's, um, it's just a moisturising cream. I just don't want to be covered in the... Uh, I don't want to be covered in the colour trying to clean it off. So I'll go for the uh, go for the lighter cream. Let's just put a little bit on the inside again. It's only skin and it does need to be moisturised. So I'll start down into the toe area. There we go. It's a little awkward. Hand only just fits. There we go. That's that one. I'll just rub a little bit around the ankle. I mean, it's, it's, it's a dry skin, it's around 60 years old. I suspect the previous owners had never really moisturised the insides. And uh, it, does, it does pay to do this a little bit, because if, you, if, you, if your linings crack or split, it's, it's dreadfully uncomfortable to wear. Right, that one will do. Let's pop the tree back in. Very important to keep the trees in whilst you're moisturising, just to force the shape. These were a little bit curled up and they were wrinkled across the vamps. And um, here we go. The same process um, that I did last week. If you saw the previous films, forgive this, but um, it's so important just to keep going and keep going. Even when you, you think, oh, they look perfect. And the surface probably does, but the underside of the scale, the skin, um, it's, it's, more like a, it's more like natural flesh. It's, um, the scale doesn't run the full depth of the... Uh, of the skin. Um, it's, it's more regular skin with, a, with the scales sitting on the surface. It's, they're, they're very strange and um, you've got to get the cream to accept behind the scale as well. So I'm going to take plenty, just, just rub it in as usual. That's really very heavy there so I'll have to spread that around quite a lot. As I said in the previous videos you can't get away with um, just applying it thick and heavy like that and leaving it and think that will that'll sink and I'll come back. What happens the uh, the softer, more porous skin around the scale sucks in certain properties within the moisturising cream quickly, very quickly, and it's and, and then it, the, the thicker, more oily products get left behind on the surface, and then they're unable to sort of. Uh, uh, absorb on their own. So what I tend to do, and I showed it in the previous videos, but I'll show it again, uh, put a light coat all over with a cloth around the edges, absolutely everywhere. Just go back for more cream. And then I stir it and agitate it in with the brush. So that's very important. So I couldn't get away with leaving that as it is, even though it's relatively relatively light coat of wet cream. I couldn't get away with leaving that. If I just left that and came back to it in a couple of hours, it'd have a sticky, gummy residue on the surface. Um, very, very much like chewing gum if I left it on heavily enough. Because there are so many components and properties within the creams, and some of them are more easily absorbed than others. And if you just push it on, the easy ones go first. They've got the least resistance and they go first, but it, it then it, it becomes very difficult for the thicker properties to be drawn in afterwards. So. I just take the take the stiff stiff old clean brush and stir it. You can you can feel it dragging on the surface when it's there. It's sort of slightly gummy, and as it absorbs, the brush starts to slide. It starts to slide a bit more freely now. So um, you do, and eventually it will simply stop absorbing. And um, this is the this is the key. Um, you, you get used to the feeling of it. Um, you'll apply this so many times if you've got an old skin, whether it be crocodile, snake, um, lizard like these. As you apply the first cream, it goes on easily with the cloth. And you, you can feel it sinking in slightly. But it's when you become to stir it like this that you can tell that this, there either is or there isn't product left on the surface. When the skin's fully saturated behind the scales, it might take two weeks, it, it stays gummy on the surface. The brush is kind of stiff to move. It feels just claggy. 
when, when it's pulled the product in very quickly, you, it, it slips around. You can feel it. This is the indicator anyway when you're bridging it. So I'll leave that now. I'll leave that for another 12, 24 hours and I'll do it again and again. And um, this, this is sliding around. I can feel there's very little resistance. That cream's gone. Um, but I'm hoping to feel the brush get slightly sticky, that it won't, however much I keep stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring, it just won't pull anymore. It's, it's just left something on the surface. And you'll know that when the skin's totally saturated. I'm talking about saturated behind the scales, not so much on the top. Um, to wear them before you know, the skin is saturated would be a disaster. It would almost certainly crack here. It would almost certainly crack around the edges. An absolute disaster. And also I like to moisturise the soles. It's only skin and they, this dries and they will crack there. Um, and when it bends, it just cracks. And then also this area here that touches the pavement on a very dry skin, it's quite brittle. It just cuts through very, very quickly. You'll, within a few hours of wear, they'll be destroyed. But if you get them soft and moisturised, they become much more supple and they're much less, um, they suffer less, much less abrasion. It's very much, a, if you've got like a, you know, use them foot files on your feet. I mean, if you've got hard, hard skin on your heel, the foot file will rub that away very easily. And then when it, because it's dry, it's brittle, it just comes away. And then when it, it just simply stops cutting when it comes to the fresh skin underneath. And it, it doesn't hurt, but it, it, just, it just doesn't cut the fresh, you know, new uh, supple skin just doesn't cut very easily or at, at all with the um, with the abrasive file or the pumice stone. It's very much the same with these on the uh, pavement. If this is dry, that will cut through enormously quickly. If it's moisturised and supple, it won't. So before I turn off this uh, camera once again, I'm just going to pop a little bit more black on this sole. And um, you can get away with leaving it slightly heavier on these uh, on these leather soles. They're um, uh, it's, it's regular skin, it's not, a, it's not an exotic skin. So you don't really need to stir this in in the same way. And you wouldn't on a, um, around the edges as well, around the welting, um, on, on, on more, just regular skins like calf skin, like I've showed you to rub it in with the brush. You don't necessarily need to do that. That's strictly really for exotics, it's necessary. So I put on quite a heavy application there and I'm going to just leave that, let that sink in and it was sinking quite well. But I need the uh, edges, I need, because this, this can crack as well, all, all around the edges when you start to wear them, if they're dry, it will just crack and it has the most dreadful appearance. It's not really restorable other than completely res removing the welting and that's an enormously challenging job um, to do properly. By a bespoke maker, it's costly, very costly. And by a high street, high street cobbler, quite frankly, they'll never be the same. These are completely original. I intend to keep them that way, but, um, We'll come back to these in a few days. Um, as I say to you, please do excuse my dusty appearance. And uh, I'm now going to uh, get on with what I'm supposed to be doing, which is restoring the rest of this building. It's, it's actually just after six o'clock in the morning here. I need to be going out and making a noise. I'd need to wait at least a little bit before I go out and make that sort of noise.